what's up everybody? It's Cody back with Pack Pullers, and uh, we're we're back. We're finally here again. Ashley's Ashley's hidden over in the corner. Um, and today we're opening something, but we're not opening cards. We're we're breaking like the whole Pack Pullers rules of pulling packs. And uh, you may have seen it in the title of the video or the thumbnail, or if you know me in real life, you might have heard me talking about this for the last like month. But today, we are going to be unboxing and giving a first impressions of my Valve Steam Deck that got delivered today, actually, on my birthday, of all things. So, happy birthday to me. FedEx came through. Uh, so, yeah, we're going we're gonna to pop this open. We're going to take a look at it. We're not going to be doing a deep dive into specs or anything like that, but... We're going to talk about uh, initial impressions and what I think about it and my experience in reserving and purchasing a Steam Deck. So, without further ado, let's crack her open. And I'll just tell you guys, it has been a long time since I've been this excited about a product. Uh, for anybody that knows me, ooh. So what do we got here? Uh, looks like we have a bunch of different languages of where you can play it. So we got on the subway. I'm trying to make sure everything's in in uh, frame. In auto, I'm guessing in the car. Uh, I know somewhere it says on the toilet. There it is, on the toilet. It's up here. There it is, on the toilet. Then we have a little instructional booklet. Looks like it shows us our different menus, Steam menu, options menu, micro SD card slot. Uh, it's got a QR code on it. I'm not sure what the QR code's for. Power adapter, power button, or charging port rather. And then your games are going places. Yes, they absolutely are. But we'll hold off on that. We'll pull everything else up first. Set that bad boy right there. Uh, power adapter, probably. Power brick, looks like it. Yep, contents, one power adapter. Uh, I'm not sure the wattage on this brick. Okay. Let's see how long this is. I do wish, I do wish I had a, a female USB-C side here instead of the, the cord. That way I could put in a longer cord if I wanted to, but this is, this is decently long. It's probably a four foot cable, male USB-C in. So perfect, that's our power brick, our power adapter. What else do we have in here? Instruction manual. Uh, da, 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 da. Doesn't look like anything special. Health and safety, all that good stuff. Let's get past it all. I don't care about any of that. I want to get to the business. It looks like this is all the business. Uh, while we're opening this, oh, I bet that's real loud on the camera, or on the microphone rather, I'll just tell you guys uh, my experience in ordering this. So, I'm I'm huge into all things gaming, uh, most you know mostly PC. I've got a PS5. I've been, you know I love console games, but uh, PC is my preference. You know I keep I keep consoles to play with friends. Things like that. Oh, big case. Sturdy case. That's huge. I mean, I've got reasonably sized hands. Like, I have pretty big hands. That's, you know, close to both of my hands. Uh, so, when 
the Steam Deck was announced, which, you know, just, just so we're clear, this is Valve's handheld PC. This is not a console. Oh, is this like a security tab? It must be. So the zipper has this. It's not going to focus, but like a valve. It says valve. Uh, it's like a security tag on this, so I guess you know if it's been tampered with or opened. So that's fantastic. Uh, but the prospect of a handheld PC at, frankly, a uh, reasonable, you know, entry level price is a game changer, and I 1,000% uh, want to support it. Oh, buddy. I've ruined it. I've ruined it. Boom. Look at that. Gorgeous. Looking at the... I'm looking at the screen because I ordered the uh, 512 gigabyte version, which... Has, wow, this is, I'm getting sidetracked. This is so much better than I would have ever expected. I'm geeking out, guys. You have, you have no idea how long I've waited for this. I'm geeking out. Uh, to finish my train of thought, I ordered the 512 gigabyte version um, at 649 And that comes with a, a premium what they call uh, an anti oh gosh now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pull it up here because I want I want to use their wording I, you know I don't want to say anything out of turn but an anti glare screen basically uh, so anti glare etched glass is is the phrasing that they use wow this thing is massive it's it's big and like I said I have I have reasonably sized hands um, and this fits perfect. Like I don't have huge hands, but I definitely don't have small hands. Oh, this is wonderful. Hang on. Let's get a size comparison with the Switch. So this is a base model Switch. Uh, I get, This is the one I got at launch. You can see how dirty and filthy it is. But so much bigger. Now the Steam Deck has a 7-inch display on it, right? So 7-inch, it's uh, a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. What is it? Is it 1,200 by 800 pixels? Is that right? Let me double check here. 1,280 by 800. So it's actually a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Uh, at 400 nits. So it should be... Darker blacks, brighter, have a better color range than the Switch. Because uh, I do not have an OLED Switch. Um, I would imagine the OLED Switch would have a nicer screen. All right, let's just, let's just go ahead and boot this sucker up. All right, so it didn't come with any juice. What'd you expect? But we went ahead and got it plugged up. Uh, interestingly enough, what I didn't like looking at the Steam Deck, ooh, boom, there it is, was the charging port on the top. So the charging port's on the top of the device, but sitting here holding it, having the bottom against this table, which is very comfortable, uh, because it's not a light system, that's for sure. I think it comes in right under two pounds, like 1.7, 1.8, right under two pounds. Um, so the, the top charging port works. I think, I think it's a good choice. It's almost like the people designing these uh, systems know what they're doing because if I were to sit here and want my switch plugged in I wouldn't be able to do that I wouldn't be able to hold it against the bottom because of the underside charging port so while that's booting up I'll finish telling you guys about uh, my my process and we'll go through the through the whole setup here while I tell you uh, so I pre-ordered my system back in May so I believe it was uh, May 5th I pre-ordered my system. I put my five, you know five dollar uh, deposit down. Boom, we're back. So I pre-ordered my system in May. Uh, you know, waited patiently, put my five dollar deposit down, and then uh, here in September, uh, mid you know late September, we'll say, I got my email saying that my reservation was ready. 
on Thursday. I was out of town. Uh, fortunately, they give you 72 hours to complete your order before you lose it. So I got back in town Friday, finished my order. Uh, Sunday, I get a notification that it's shipped, and then boom, it's here Wednesday. So from the time that I got my orders or my email saying my reservation was ready, it was less than a week to get it in my hand. Um, it was delivered, you know, midday today, and it's it's late now. Uh, and I'm just now opening it. I had to wait, you know, got to get the baby down, got to get everything set up and ready. Um, but that that has been my experience. So, uh, frankly, for a system that is so high in demand. It wasn't a, uh, a terrible experience to get it. I, th I would say it's great. Originally, when I put my reservation in, uh, they said I was going to be in quarter three and that my expected uh, reservation date was somewhere between October to December. And then, you know, I've, I've been seeing articles over the last couple weeks, especially maybe the last couple months, you know, oh, Valve's really, really kicking these out and, you know, everybody's getting moved up the list. Well then, boom! I, you know, I see an update on my account it says July to September. Well, sure enough, here we are in the end of September, and I've I've got it in my hand. Uh, while we're while we're waiting for it to install and set up, we'll just take an overlook at uh, an overview at it. So, you've got your D-pad, you've got your left and right joysticks, uh, your L3, R3, clicking them in. Long travel time on those joysticks too. They feel good. Uh, your two different touch pads. I'm not 100% sure what this does. I know this one on the right is like your, your mouse cursor. Uh, if you're playing a game that's more mouse and keyboard centric. Your Steam OS button. Your system options button. Uh, your controller, Xbox controller like setup, ABXY on the face panel here. And then on the top of the system, you have your L1, R1 bumpers, your L2, R2 triggers, which do have uh, haptic feedback, by the way. They're not quite PS5, but you can feel them halfway through the trigger pull. You can feel that, that click. Uh, so it's not quite a PS5 controller, but it still feels wonderful. And then on the rear of the system are your L4, R4, L5, L, um, L5, R5, as well as your cooling vent. Oh, hey, there's your SD card slot on the bottom. Uh, these paddles, from what I understand, you know, you have, it, you have it in your hand and then you can, you know, claw and click your, oh, I bet that sounds good. Click your paddles, you can map those for different buttons. Uh, I've never used like a scuff type Xbox Elite controller, anything like that. Um, but I can tell you, you know, naturally my middle and ring fingers rest on those positions while my index fingers are on, you know, triggers. Um, I told you earlier I did go with the 512 gigabyte model. I wanted the solid state drive that that comes with. Uh, I wanted the SSD, you know, faster load times. Uh, bigger storage, but storage shouldn't be a huge issue. There's two main ways that you can expand your storage. Uh, one is through the SD card slot on the bottom, uh, which I've already purchased a 512 gigabyte SD card slot, which will give me a little over a terabyte of storage, uh, which I think you know for a hand for a handheld is perfectly reasonable. You know, might e might even be overkill. Uh, and I would say it all depends on what kind of games you're playing as well. If you're playing a lot of indie games, then that's not going to be a huge worry for you. But if you're playing AAA titles that are, you know, 80, 100, 120, you know, uh, Lord forbid that you're playing a Warzone, installing 300 gigabytes on your Steam Deck, uh, that's going to be a big thing for you. But you can also replace the solid state drive that is in the Switch, the internal memory, uh, which I don't believe is recommended by Valve. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, opening your Switch does not, or, or uh, your Steam Deck rather, does not 
immediately void your warranty. From what I understand, breaking something while it's open voids your warranty. So I, I would just I would be careful. Uh, but I think that's I think that's the wonderful thing about the the Steam Deck, um, and why I've been so excited and why this is such a game changer, in my opinion. Uh, did I mess something up? Uh oh. We were installing updates. No, we're good. Uh, why this is such a game changer, in my opinion, because I think I think this uh, really appeals to two different crowds of people. Um, number one are people that love to take apart and min max a because this is not a console. I mean, this is a PC uh, to replace parts and expand the storage and you know um, not only do you have Steam OS but you have you have Linux. On this system so whether you're not you want to run Linux or you want to install Windows and you want to download every emulator there is uh, I've seen videos of people installing World of Warcraft and you know playing World of Warcraft on here uh, which I'm tempted to do um, or if you're on the flip side and then and this is probably more of the lane that I'm gonna stay in you know I'm just gonna play my Steam lab library on this and maybe Maybe you haven't gotten into Steam, maybe you haven't gotten into to PC gaming, but now you have a, even at a $400 price point, you have a $400 PC that is that is ready to go out the door um, and can play. I mean, I would be willing to say that it could play most, if not all, of you know current gen, current gen titles on Steam. Uh, there are lists, so... Valve has been working there. They've been compiling a list. Uh, they have Steam Deck verified games. So I think they have three different categories, whether it's verified, playable, uh, or unsupported. So that, that can help you. If you're going through your library, you can look to see where your library breaks down and, uh, and how, you know, how your library winds up, whether or not you want to want to purchase a Steam Deck. But we're going to let this finish uh, updating, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to look at some gameplay. So I'll see you in a minute. Hey, and we're back. All right, so we're all logged in. We're hooked up to the internet and uh, got into our account. So we have a message, welcome to Steam Deck. Uh, looks like it's going to walk us through like a little tutorial maybe. So we will, we'll go ahead and show off that this is a touch screen, right? Yeah, so touch screen. Uh, so Steam button. Quick access button for the menus, power button, and volume button. Uh, and then, of course, the micro SD card slot. So we've gone through all that. So, boom, yeah, we're in here. Let's, let's see if we can get maybe some better focus from the camera. It's not great. It's not great. So we got, uh, let's see here, Into the Breach, Vampire Survivors. Okay, so Vampire Survivors, uh, you guys probably can't see it actually has like a verified uh, check mark next to it uh, lost ark is not supported runescape uh, tales of arise which is probably one of the first games i'm going to play on here tales of arise into the breach uh, super robot wars i mean this is you know this is steam right it's got news special offer i can see my friends you know recommended see check out my different settings what's it got on settings there's a software update we'll have to do that so let's see let's find something that's really gonna put this piece of machinery to the test hey here we are pushing this machine to its limits Old school Ruinscape. No, I'll jo I'll joke aside. We're gonna we're gonna find we're gonna find something else. Let's see here. Uh, so let's look at our trackpad. You guys probably yeah, you can see the mouse a little bit. So use our trackpad here. We'll say uh, create a new account via Steam. Yeah, sure. Date of birth. Oh god. Oh nope. 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 Hang on. Let's try this. Let's 
put it, it's putting in dates based on this might be a problem. We found an issue. Now how do I bring it up? There's a virtual keyboard, right? We'll figure this out later. I did tell a buddy I'd find out how well RuneScape played on the Steam Deck. But... What about Tales of Arise? It's a long download. Yeah! Vampire Survivors. So, it, this is what's amazing. Like, I... It, this is all cross-save from my, you know, my profile on my PC. You guys, it, this is so washed out, you guys can't see it. Uh, I, I apologize. You know, I, I haven't done this YouTube thing very long, and I don't have the equipment to uh, give this system the credit it deserves. Because this is a beautiful display, and a beautiful system. And what is being displayed on the camera does not accurately represent what I have in my hands. But I love me some Vampire Survivors and I'm going to be playing a whole lot of this on my Steam Deck. Yeah, you know, man, it just it feels so good in the hands. Let's see, let's see. We'll take the cross. I like the cross. Well, guys, we're going to call it here. And uh, that's really because, well, I want to I wanna get to play in my Steam Deck. Uh, I, I, hope, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope that I've done this system justice in showing you guys what it can do. You know, it, Vampire Survivors is not the most taxing uh, game there ever was. Let's see if we can look at one more thing before we go. Let's go to... Desktop mode. Before we go, last thing. So we talked about this being on Steam OS, but it also runs Linux. So here is our desktop. Oh, hey. There's like a rumble feature on the mouse. Can you guys, can you guys hear that? I don't think you can. But anyway, yeah, here we go. I mean, this is our desktop. We can open up, we can open up Firefox, or we can install Firefox. Probably not going to do that. We can switch back to gaming mode. We can probably do it from here from the Steam button. Maybe. Am I doing it wrong here? Oh, games. We can launch games directly from the desktop mode. This really is an incredible piece of machinery. Uh, you know, I... I don't feel like I've done it justice in this video. I really don't. Um, I'll just tell you, I'm... Oh, we can go to big picture mode. I've been so incredibly excited for this, because this, this does change the game. This is an entry-level PC that you can have in your hand, take with you. I guess one thing we haven't talked about is battery life. Battery life is a limitation of the system. Um, you know, they say you get two to eight hours, uh, depending on, you know, if you're playing a, a AAA title, uh, if you're playing some AAA title at, you know, this is a 60 hertz display, so you can do 60 FPS. Uh, you probably have to sacrifice some quality, but if you're if you're running it like a workhorse, you know, it's you're gonna get two hour, two maybe three hours of battery life um, playing some indie game or even knocking down your settings and going to, you know, 30 FPS. You'll you'll get closer to eight hours, but this this changes everything and affordable, not ridiculous to acquire, 
not having to go through scalpers, not having to, you know, refresh a site over and over again. Yeah, it took some time. You know, it took me four months. Sure. But that was four months. I put a $5 deposit down and four months later, here it is. Easy peasy. Switch through my profile here. But this is where we're going to call it. We're going to call it quits here. Um, mostly because I want to get some other games installed and I want to get to playing, right? I have a, I have a lot of games in my backlog. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Breaks things down. Oh man, I'm going to keep getting distracted. All games, great on Steam Deck. So out of my library, it's saying 100% orange juice, which is fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Curse of the Dead Gods, Dead Cells, Divinity 2, Dragon's Dogma, which I can't wait to play on here. Gunfire Reborn. Uh, let's see here. Into the Breach, I just bought today. What else? P4, love it. Oh, man, you guys can't even see this. I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through here. Persona 4, fantastic. Super Robot Wars, Witcher 3, Tales of Arise. You know, I've, I've already got a huge library of games that I haven't finished that, that are perfect to play on the Steam Deck. Um, go through my whole library here. But everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to uh, get you excited about or introduce this to you. Vermintide, let's go. And um, I, w I wish I could do this system justice. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Reach out to me directly. Um, and I say go to Steam right now. Go to the Steam store and reserve yourself a Steam Deck. Because this is an incredible piece of machinery. And I don't think anybody will regret the purchase. But thank you everybody that came and watched today. Why don't you go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe let us know what you think down below, and uh, tune in. I think we're going to have a lot more Steam Deck content. Uh, maybe talk about you know great games on the Steam Deck. Maybe uh, you know do a you know a couple weeks with it and, and see if our first impressions were up to date. Uh, talk about some accessories. I do have a lot of accessories coming, so we can talk about that too. But let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks everybody. Bye.